If someone asks an endurance racing fan what's the best racing category ever, he will probably start telling you about Group C. It was a loose framework of rules at the end of the 1980s, with the goal to encourage designers and engineers to push the technological envelope farther than it had ever been pushed before. Group C featured the ground effect, turbo engines and unconventional aerodynamic approaches which pushed speeds to the boundaries of physics. With so much space for innovation, many cars became iconic, and people still recognize some. One of them, the grey one, has an incredible backstory. This is the story of the Sauber Mercedes C9. It was the mid-80s, the epicenter of the new Group C category. The World Sports Car Championship, with the latest classes introduced by the FIA, was quickly gaining popularity and interest from both spectators and manufacturers such as Porsche, Jaguar, Toyota and many more. Thanks to this fertile scenario, after almost 30 years of absence from motorsport, Mercedes saw an opportunity to get back on the track coming up with an unlikely cooperation with Sauber, the tiny Zurich-based motorsport company. Together, they were looking forward to creating a car capable of winning the WSC, and particularly the prestigious 24 Hour of Le Mans. And so, the Sauber C9 was born, as an evolution of the unreliable and not so well-performing Sauber C8 of 1985. Some simple ideas led to a stunning car. It retained the light alloy monocoque chassis of the C8, but considerably stiffer and with numerous improvements. The rear suspension changed from vertically positioned spring damper units to a horizontal layout. Aerodynamic modifications included repositioning the oil and water radiator to the nose of the car, while the rear deck was completely redesigned, with the rear wing being mounted solely on a central support. The engine was also lighter, and turbochargers became more efficient. It produced about 800 horsepower, pushing only 905 kilos of weight. However, it revved to a relatively low 7000 RPM, thus reducing stress and increasing reliability and efficiency. On paper, the C9 was fast and promising. Engineers and drivers had high expectations for the future. However, the truck still had to confirm that speed and the first problems were right ahead of that. In the debut season, 1987, two Sauber C9 cars were run by Kuros Racing, named after the fragrance brand of Yves Saint Laurent and officially backed by Mercedes-Benz. Henry Pescarolo and Mike Thackwell dropped the car in its first race, the fourth round of the 1987 World Sports Car Championship, but unfortunately, they didn't manage to finish the race. Again, in the very next Grand Prix, the 24 hours of Le Mans, the car wasn't able to reach the finish line, suffering from gearbox failure after showing its potential when Dumfries set a lap record. The other participating C9 were retired too. Later in the season, Mike Thackwell took pole position at Spa, paired with Schlesser. However, he couldn't win and finished 7th, scoring the only points in that season for the team, 12th in the final standings. Schlesser won the final race of the year, the Nürburgring Super Cup, which sadly wasn't awarding championship points. A bitter end to a bad season. Until now, you can see that there was a common issue in most of the races held by the C9. Reliability. The car was fast, beautiful and with outstanding performances, but overall it was too fragile. And considering the endurance nature of the World Sports Car Championship, that was a big issue. However, the real plot was still to be written. In 1988, the team changed its name and attitude. 
the now-called Sauber Mercedes improved the reliability with many upgrades to the engine without losing speed and became one of the only two winning cars in the season. The other was the Jaguar XJR9. The C9 scored in fact 5 wins, one less than the Jaguar, which went on to win the championship titles both in drivers and teams categories. That was the season that put the C9 on top of the competition. But something was still missing. They actually won championship races. But what about Le Mans and the title? The Sauber C9 won on 5 different tracks, but not at Le Mans. In fact, they didn't even participate in the 1988 24 hours as the team withdrew due to concern over their Michelin tires after a blowout during practice. And so, the Sauber Mercedes C9 would have only one more shot before the car would go to the museums. And that was the 1989 season. In 1989, the car featured a new engine that used aluminum heads, which made the car lighter and again achieving this without losing power. The team also changed the color scheme, using a traditional Mercedes Silver Arrows paint scheme. The intentions of Mercedes were clear to everyone. The car became an icon, clocking a speed of 400 km an hour, 248 miles per hour, down the Mozan Strait, one of the highest top speeds in racing, apart from drag racing. That speed, together with 1988's record of 405 km an hour Peugeot, caused the introduction of two chicanes on the Molson Strait in 1990. That car was so fast that it forced a racetrack to change layout. And now, that last shot at Le Mans had to be converted into a victory. And they did it. Sauber Mercedes finished first, second and fifth. Mass, Reuter and Dickens won the race in the 63 car, with 389 laps around the Circuit de la Sarthe the highest on that track configuration. The C9 went on to be a dominant force in the 1989 World Championship. They were insanely fast from day one, and now they were light and reliable too. The C9 outraced everyone in the championship, winning 7 out of 8 races, missing only Dijon. Jean-Louis Schlesser would end up taking the driver's championship that season, giving the C9 its place in the history of motorsport and in the heart of the enthusiasts. For the 1990 World Sports Car Championship, the C9 was replaced by the Mercedes-Benz C11. In the opening race of the season at Suzuka, the team used the C9 one last time, taking the farewell victory. Mauro Baldi and Jean-Louis Lesser won the race, the last one for that car. After three full seasons plus one race, the C9 ended its competitive life with 17 wins on its account, being the second and latest Mercedes car to win at Le Mans. The story of the Sauber Mercedes C9 is a story of dedication, the story of a dream that has been achieved while working on problems. No one believed that an unreliable car could win a championship in two years except for the ones who worked on it. And they were right.